All right, we've got some people rolling in. Um, everyone, thanks for jumping in. Um, I got Barry here with me Jordan from Z Buyer. Um, we've got an exciting topic, how to find seller leads. And Barry, I know you were just saying this is something you like to talk about, that you're excited to have a chance to kind of jump on here with me. Um, you know, of course, at Z Buyer, you know, we're a lead generation source. Um, so, of course, we love talking about how to find seller leads. Um, but I also wanted to talk about, you know, some other ways besides just using us and, you know, maybe some like actual examples of what you guys are doing, Barry, in your area to find true seller leads. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's something that I, mean, I think I think it's a different, a different methods that people use right now. Um, mm -hmm. And you're right. You know, see buyer leads, your seller leads, the old ones. You know, if you've been a, a buying your leads for a while. Um, yeah. you know, there's going to be some that you catch, you call right away and, and you get them on the phone and you, you know, as long as you're the first person in the door, you know, you can list it pretty fast, but, you know, I think sometimes we neglect the fact that if you, if you're a paying subscriber of C buyer and you're a year in, let's say you get 20 seller leads a month for whatever, you know, your plan is, um, you know, that's a couple of hundred a year that you should be running ads to, um, and, because you know they own a home, you know their home address, uh, and now you have website activity because you're running on running ads to them. Um, it allows you to do email marketing and text-based follow-up nurture in a very targeted way that's very relevant to the consumer. Absolutely. Um, and you know, this is something we've talked about off and on on here. And Barry, you can firsthand attest to this. You know, the majority of our leads, you know. 72 percent um, tell us just going through the initial pathway kind of their estimate that they're at least six months out or further so we we kept capture them early on in the process and just like to what you were saying you know someone who's been with us a year you know find kind of the bare minimum getting 20 a month um, what we've done is we've built up your database of several hundred people that are homeowners that are curious about their home's value, what's changing in their market, what could options look like for them. Uh, but most importantly, we're giving you the chance to start building campaigns, whether it's you know email campaigns, retargeting campaigns through Facebook, whatever that looks like, we're giving you the opportunity to start that. So whenever they do decide, hey, now is the time I'm actually ready to move forward. Um, you know, I do want to get serious talking about this. You already have their information. And if you've been doing your part, you've been nurturing them the entire way uh, through, you know, multiple different channels of nurture tech. So they're not then thinking of what realtor am I going to go with? Who do I need to talk to? They already have the person in mind because you've been nurturing them uh, the entire process. Well, yeah. And um, and I, I remember it was a few webinars ago. I, I talked about this, but, um, you know, the, the thing I'll say I think we need to get out of the mindset of being waiters and waitresses, you know, calling these sellers and saying, do you need to sell? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're effectively wanting them to, to tell us it's time to do our job. And I really want to encourage everybody, especially in the topic of selling your home, um, and this was, as you know, Jordan, a, a chapter dedicated in my book, Too Nice for Sales, was, was around yeah. this whole subject. It is not a topic that delights the consumer. Selling your home evokes stress, right? Now, as an agent, it makes me happy to talk to people about selling their home. Yeah. So I'm, I'm following the dopamine. If I, most realtors, you know, they get on the phone and I am excited to talk about, it makes me happy to talk to someone about selling their home. And so that's the direction I want to go. But you got to understand to the degree that it makes us happy to talk about it, it actually is having the opposite effect on the person on the other end of the phone. What makes them happy, what the, the consumer happy, typically is where they're going next. And so even if it's a seller lead in your drip campaigns, in your text messages, uh, in your phone conversations, you need to you need to at some point talk about where you're going to go next. And the reason that you need to do that is you're going to find that the consumer wants to talk to you. Some of you, your your seller nurture is 
I can do a CMA. I can do a walkthrough. I can do a CMA. I can do a walkthrough. Are you ready to sell? Right. And, um, and you're kind of, you're, you're out of touch with the consumer. And the agents that really do well with seller leads are the ones that are climbing up to the middle of the funnel. It's the people that are saying at the beginning of the conversation, hey, I'm not really ready to sell. Um, I was really just looking into some stuff. I'll call you when I'm ready. The agent that can monetize that conversation, turn that person into a client, uh, they will always have an abundance of sales. Always. Because nobody else is talking to them this way um right. and so you want to ask questions like uh hey you know what are you hoping to change about where you live where are you going to go next and so it's you're going to find that people are going to be really excited to talk to you about that and then the conversation about the homeowner selling their home it is a byproduct of the discussion of where they're going you still get there you just don't get the door slammed in your face saying you know i'm not ready call me in a year and we Absolutely. blame the leads for that, you know? So yeah. um, I think uh, to put, you know, in other words, what, what you're just saying there is you're talking to seller leads as if they came through as a buyer. Lead. Where are they looking to go? What is the next chapter? What does the next home look like? What's the vision uh, for the next step? Um, because to buy, you know, selling is going to happen. Like you said, it's a byproduct of that. Um, but figuring out what is the next step. So speaking to them almost as if they're a buyer lead first. Um, and we see yeah. agents that are working with us and sharing, you know, what success they're getting. Um, the nurture tech, of course, it has information and it's built around, you know, the fact that they came in initially looking at selling, you know, their home, but they're starting to do more of nurturing it as a, if it were almost a buyer lead, uh, showing potential properties, what's new, what's changing, what is advantageous right now for them as a buyer in the market not talking about as much as if they're a seller, but they're a buyer in the market. Right, right. And um, there's a lot of, um, you know, when you do your drip campaigns and your nurture and your scripts, if you really do focus on um, being in step with where the consumer is, imagine, let's use a ridiculous example. Imagine you're a single person and you want to find a wife or a husband, right? Are you going to go walk into restaurants if I'm a man and I want to propose? Am I going to walk around with a ring saying like, hey, will you marry me? And I just met him, right? Like, that's so obviously weird and won't work that um, like we all kind of are like, yeah, no way. But when you're calling a, a lead that or a person that owns their home and saying like, are you interested in selling? You are only focused on what you want. You are out of touch with what they want. And that's why nobody wants to talk to you. It's why they don't return your calls. And we say the leads always ghost me. Well, if the leads are always ghosting you, you need to ask yourself a question. Why do people not value the words that come out of my mouth? Is it only because I'm discussing the things that I want to discuss? And for the majority of us, the answer is we're talking about the stuff that we want to discuss, not what they want to discuss. And, um, and so, you know, and, and when you ask these questions of these sellers and these homeowners, the goal of the questions is to surface an opportunity to take on the role of a teacher. So if a seller says to me, I'm waiting a year, I'm simply going to come from curiosity and say, okay, how did you decide on a year? Now, they're almost always going to say they don't know the answer to that. But oh, I don't know. I just know I'm not ready. Perfect. My other clients really enjoyed meeting with me before they're ready. Um, and uh, and so what I like to do is either on a weeknight or the weekend, let's sit down. I'm going to walk through your home. I'm going to look at it like a buyer would. And I'm going to help you prevent spending money on things that aren't going to net a return. Um. And so now I'm speaking directly to their need. I'm saying, let me come to your house because you're going to try to fix stuff that's not going to get you any more money. Let me look at it like a buyer would. And I got to do this before you're ready. Well, what happens is as soon as you get in there, right, you've got a CMA with you. You've now overcame two to three significant, um, like, uh, 
hurdles. Meeting the agent yeah. is scary. The cost is scary. The process is scary. Like all of all three of those things, by the time you met them, you've gone over that. And, uh, and what we found is a lot of people are like, you know, I said a year, but maybe, maybe we can explore what, where I can move to. And maybe, maybe I'm more ready than I thought. And that's what normally happens. Yeah. And, you know, with our leads, the biggest thing we see in common with seller leads, and this is across the nation, it doesn't matter what time frame they're looking to sell it. They're trying to understand options. Uh, they they want to know options. They want to know what's the best option for them. And I think part of that option that they're referring to, just like you spoke about, you know, what can I do to get the most money out of my home? I, I want to maximize the investment that I've already made in this property. Um, and, and so from your point, coming to them and speaking to them as a buyer and what's going to do that. In their mind, they might think that they need $15,000 in renovations to fully capitalize on the home, when in reality, that might not be the case. And so having that conversation, rather than just selling the home, but how can we help prepare you to sell for whether it's a year out or two years out when that time comes, what's going to put you in the best position you can be in? Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, some additional services that we're using with Z buyer seller leads and our database as a whole, mm -hmm. like Zoo De Delio. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. Um, Amazing platform. It's, it's like a cash offer platform. And so when we get a Z buyer lead, we will send them a link to submit a cash offer to our network and our drips. And we've actually had some of the Z buyer leads fill that link out. It's like, that, at that point, it's like, okay, this is too easy. But um, because, you know, we, you guys generated the leads, the dealio has got them, you know, getting a cash offer and we get a commission for selling it to Zudelio. Um, and uh, probably could be a good revenue stream for you guys to do it if you didn't, if you decide not to sell leads to agents, George. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, definitely. But, um, so that one works really well. Um, you know, if you already have a network of cash investors, then don't worry about it. But uh, Open Door never became popular in our market and these other iBuyer programs. So Zudelio allows us to kind of set ourselves apart and like instantly, you know, start the process to get a cash offer. Um, and then- um, uh, the, so the other thing we hear, yeah. because we've got a lot of Z buyer members using Zudelio. Uh, we, we did a couple of things with them. Um, and a lot of people really liked it because maybe they couldn't make, you know, cash offers themselves. They they weren't in position right. to start investing or they didn't have investors in their area that they connected with. Um, or to your point, you know, certain platforms just hadn't, you know, grown in their market. Um, so using Zudelio, you know, it's been awesome. But the biggest thing they see is, you know, they might not get any response from the homeowner through calling through all of their nurturing that they're doing, but they'll get a response of, I just filled this out and I don't like this offer. What can I do? Right. Um, or no, I won't take that offer. That's too low. And so then it opens up the conversation. Okay, well, what is your price? What are you looking to get? And it's just another way to approach them and get the conversation started. And again, show them options and solidify that, yes, you are the realtor that they should be working with because who else is doing it? No one else presented to them three cash offers, which they don't know that that's not you. They see it as an extension of you. This is a platform you're using. No one else is showing them multiple offers within a day of submitting their lead information. It's all about setting yourself apart. And somebody needs to hear this, what I'm about to say. Some of you, you know, your automated CMAs, your automated offers, you, your, your drip campaigns, you don't like using things like this because you don't like the data. Like, for example, an automated CMA through HomeBot uh, or Wilopo Seller Alert. And you, you know, you get them and you're like, oh my gosh, like the value's off. I've got a seller that's contacting me saying, why is it wrong? See, to me, even if the seller doesn't like the data I'm providing, the fact that they're talking to me about it is the win. So you guys, some of you, you're so focused on the tool and whether or not the tool is good. If the tool was amazing, hear me, they don't need you. If the tool is perfect, they don't need you. The fact that they're complaining and talking to you about it is the success. 
Now, I'm not saying like it, the data doesn't matter at all and it doesn't matter what you send them. I'm not taking it to the opposite extreme. However, the conversation about the tool, whether it's a positive one or a negative one, is the win. When someone responds to our AI, our, you know, we use the Raya while it was AI, stop. We call that lead. Right. Hey, my assistant was bothering you. You asked her to stop texting. I just wanted to call and apologize. About half of the people that answer the phone when we do that say, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a robot. I'm actually looking. <laughs> Hey, I saw you got my automated value. You were upset about it. Listen, I agree with you. You know, computers are only going to be so good. Um, uh, but that's why I'm here. I want to get you a better uh, number, a more accurate number. Piece. What's that next exactly. step? Yeah. Right. Um, right. You know, we, we hear it a lot, you know, especially, you know, being on the front ends of, you know, selling leads. Um, and selling data to agents where a lot of agents don't see the value in it. You know, they don't want to buy into it. Um, data, you know, aside from water, you know, fresh water is the most valuable resource, you know, in the world, but data has surpassed everything else more than gold, any precious metal. That is the most valuable resource in the world, aside from fresh. Um, you know, it, it's really up to you, you know, if you have the data, being able to understand it and know how to use it effectively. Um, and, but once you can, you know, having the data and as much data as you have is tremendous. Um, like, like I'm looking in your account right now, Barry. Um, you have 5,300, not just real leads, but prospecting leads from us. This is the age free stuff to give you. And mind you, this account has been open since like 2017, 2018. Um, and the account's like seven, 800 bucks a month. You know, it, it's not that much, but that's okay. you know, 5,300 homeowners in your general area that you now know about, um, which allows you to say, if you needed to find a seller in a day, you know, you had nothing, you had no listings, no business, you had nothing. You have 5,300 people just from us, not including your database, that you can begin some email campaigns and other things to go out to them and look for that website activity. And you're going to find a seller there. Yeah, so I'm actually logging in to my CRM now. Um, and uh, one of the things we did, so there's, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this general, but we, so there's three like AI scoring companies that are really popular. SmartZip is like the OG, right? You can upload leads into them, they'll score them. I use Revaluate um, and they're scanning for divorce and death, uh, delivery of a baby, degrees, downsizing, all these life events that um, are uh, indicative of someone moving. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually look for, because we uploaded a ton of our Z buyer leads. Oh, and another one is that there, it's a, like a new player in the, in the, um, in the space is uh, likely AI. And I haven't used them, but just, you know, that, that's another one that I've heard. Um, yeah. So then what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say evaluate score. So we created a list of all of our Z buyer leads that are AI said is likely to move. So I'm going to try to share my screen. I'm on my iPad. So give me just a second. Oh, only the host can share. Well, I'll, I'll talk you guys through it. Um, I have 237 Z buyer leads right now that when I ran them through Revaluate, okay, I can share my screen now. All right. Can you see my, uh... yeah. yeah, all right. So I've got 237 people that um, my revaluate score is above 80, right? So here's the Z buyer leads. Now what's fascinating about this is when you look at the date the leads are created, let's sort old to new. So this is a Z buyer lead from, December of 2019 that has a score of 96, right? So this is a, a four-year-old Z buyer lead and almost four years that AI is saying, 
AI is saying, hey, this person's likely to move. So what we do is we don't call the person and say, hi, you know, our AI says you're going to be moving soon, blah, blah, blah. What we do is we say, hey, are you still at 123 Smith Street? I'm not sure if you've considered moving recently, but we have buyers looking in this neighborhood. And we use the heat map from Wailopo that scans our database and puts their house on a map and shows all the buyers that we have shopping on our website. So it's like a quick and easy tool that our sell our agents will send to sellers. And um, we had one just recently, Jordan, where my agent calls to likely to move old Z buyer lead. And the seller said, I'm so glad you called. How great is it when they say that, right? <laughs> um, my husband just had, um, was uh, he's diagnosed with dementia. He's going to be living in a home. I'm up in age. I was just speaking with my daughter. I think we're going to have to go ahead and sell the house literally the next day. Now this doesn't happen all the time. Okay. So it's right. not, it's not that easy, but the script we used wasn't Hi, Are you looking for an agent to possibly sell your home? That's not how we started. We started as a suggestion serendipity like that serendipitous vibe that we just happen to be calling and happen to be asking the right question at the exact right time. Yeah. That is our superpower. They don't know that it's data driven. And I'm bringing this up because you brought up data and it's like, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, and so, and they're on our website, right? So they're, they're, they're shopping for a home. I could drill down that list and say, show me all, out of these 220 people that are likely to move soon. I'm just going to add a filter that says site visit. Last visit was less than, you know, a month ago, let's just say. Seven out of the 250 have been on our website recently, right? Within the last month. So this, this is why I don't really ask my agents to make more than 20 outbound dials a day. That's super weird. That's not normal. Yeah. But it's because the list that we have Sorry, the list we have is so dialed in that it's I, I don't need them to call a thousand people a week. I need them to call a hundred, but those one hundred, based on data I have, are really good prospects. Yeah, it, it's just a surgical approach uh, yep. rather than trying to hit the entire database. You know, every quarter and call every person that you know of that owns a home. Um, using the data to tell you when to call, who to call, um, and where should you be focusing. Uh, no, no one likes to just hit the phone over and over and over to get no answer, no answer, voicemail. No, I'm not something. Why are you calling? Um, right. So you that approach. Um, question for you. Revaluate. What does it cost on a monthly basis? I don't know. Uh, we we uploaded 170,000 leads of our own leads into that system, and it was uh -huh. very expensive. Um, we broke it up into, I believe it was like a 12-month thing, um, and they have Likely, so there's smart zip, revaluate, and likely AI. I've been using revaluate for four years now. And um, the thing I like about theirs is that when circumstances change, so let's say somebody is a 60 score in my CRM right now and they have a baby and then and revaluates AI kicks in, let's say now the score is an 84. Well, they're going to send an alert to us and update the number in our CRM. So the number stays live. Um, and, uh, and so I like that um, for several reasons. Uh, and, uh, and it's become a prospecting list for us. We just, you know, and there's the thing with these data companies, like I, I use SmartZip. The data was really good. The reason why I didn't stick with SmartZip was the data was good. But to get them to help me market to these people was like prohibitively expensive. Um, the reason why I like Revaluate is they weren't doing the marketing. They just, you know, had me do it. Now, likely AI, I just saw does like some data augmentation. Somebody was, but I don't know if the data is any good. I haven't tested it. Um, but I was just speaking to somebody at the, at the Scottsdale Follow Up Boss Conference last week um, that they were trying them out. And so that's another good one. But yeah, like I said, I've been using Revaluate for four years and I'm really happy with it. Yeah. So I, I'm looking online right here. Revaluate looks like $139 a month for 2,000 contacts. 
So yeah. uh, it's not going to cover, you know, someone's entire database, you know, especially someone like yourself that, that's got a large database. It's not going to cover all of it, uh, but you're definitely going to get a you know fair amount um, in, to do some numbers here. So if you've got 139 bucks a month in that, um, and if someone came and started with Z buyer, um, and here I'm inside of your account. So we're in Virginia um, and we don't have a ton of leads there either. It's a pretty limited area. Um, I know I tried to buy more. Yeah, you, you <laughs> most of what we have. Um, yeah. but, so you spent 500 bucks with us, $501. Uh, you're gonna get 30, you're gonna get 41 leads. That's kind of a mix of buyers and sellers. Um, so 41 real-time leads, but what you're going to get is access to our database, our historical database, that prospecting list. So you're going to get 873 leads up to two years old. Um, you know, something $139, like revaluate, to then cross-reference this and look and see who's likely to sell. That's a strong, strong, you know, opportunity that you have. That's a large list of leads that you got for 500 bucks and then a hundred something dollars, you know, for some AI technology to tell you before you just try and call through almost a thousand people where to focus your efforts right there. That's a quick way to find sellers in your market. Well, yeah, it, yes. And instead of spending a dollar per of those 1000 leads over a year, let's say, you know, a dollar per lead. Yeah. Um, and I spent a thousand bucks. Well, now I can spend $5 per lead on 200 leads. I'm still spending a thousand, but I'm doing more mailing, more Popeyes, more drop-offs, right? To a right. smaller subset of people. So I, I look at a service like Revaluate as an efficiency play to see who do I want to double down on um, and place effort. Now, a new lead at Z buyer, regardless of what Revaluate says, right? For us, a new lead from Z buyer is a significant moment in time because they've gone through the process of inquiring that they are wanting to buy. Um, and so we're going to treat that one with a high degree of urgency. We're going to put a lot of money and effort and time into those new Z buyer leads. The legacy or the old leads that you guys have, we're going to run those through, uh, you know, remark like running ads to all of them. We're going to put them on automated, you know, campaigns. Right. We're going to scan them through. And then we're going to drop off CMAs for the people that have the high score on the old leads that we have, we, we get access to for free. Um, but the new ones, man, I don't care. Revaluate says it's a 10 out of 100. We're, we're going after it because right. the AI is not always right. That's awesome. I kind of like the direction we did up here. And I will be honest, I, I didn't have much of a direction for this. You know, yeah. typically we can come up with some good conversations. Um, but I mean, that right there, if, you know, you're struggling. If you're looking to find, you know, I think the title of this was hidden sellers in your market. Um, you know, a little bit of data, a little bit of, you know, modern technology. Um, but, you know, a company with a system like our platform, we're going to give you access to hundreds or thousands of old leads, just depending on your market and how much we have there and, Hopefully you're not somewhere where we've got a Barry buying up everything that he can get. Uh, so there are some more of those older leads. You know, that's a strong amount that you just added to your database. Or if you're fairly new or you don't have a large database, it's maybe something you never put a lot of emphasis to. This is a right. quick to boost that database. And all of a sudden you have a large pool of known homeowners you can begin working with. Yeah, look, the future is database management. Uh, I've got to jump off here in a second, but to, to your point, um, I planned the content. Like I, I was, I, I looked yeah. at the title and was like, all right, these are the, these are the things. That's why you got me here, man. That's, that's the whole, why I got you the whole purpose. Um, but uh, I started with 6,000 leads in 2016 and now I have 249,000 in my CRM. Wow. Um, and so I have, I have gone gangbuster on database growth it you know you name it i'm getting it i'm getting all of them in there and now i've got a little universe of people that always see my ads um and now i i just you know now i've got 100 agents and i don't want to buy new leads for all those agents and so i've partitioned my my database off of activity and so now i've created a new kind of opportunity 
right? It's an old lead that isn't done, that they're still acting interested based off of key indicators in my CRM. And now the ROI numbers, they start to get really exciting. I don't have to buy Zillow anymore. And I'm not mad at Zillow. I don't hate Zillow or realtor.com. I just don't like spending $400 a lead. Like it's really hard for me to profit, right? And I'm in this for a profit. And now I've, I've like, like basically I'm doing what Zillow and realtor.com are doing at the national level in right. my backyard. Very cool. So very cool. Everyone. Always thanks. a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, this was a really fun, exciting conversation um, and a great way for anyone who's looking to all of a sudden find some seller leads in their market. This is a pretty simple game plan on, on how you can do that quickly and effectively. Yep. All right. Sounds good, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.